All right. Here is round two. We are going to come back to Vexus and see if we can't do some features, uh, some feature changes. <clears throat> so let's get if our audio is good. I think so. I'm sure it's fine. Um, it still looks excellent connection. Okay, well, let's, let's, let's see if that's accurate. <sighs> so, when last we left our intrepid programmer, whoops, let me get my, uh, chop out the pat here. I think it's this. Uh, it looks like this. Hello. It's GUI. It's GUI shift space. I was doing the other one. That was weird. Never mind. All right. <clears throat> so our lovely Vexus tool here having some issues. Uh, it is no longer slipping seconds, but it is advancing uh, a few additional seconds or something like that. It's speeding up time. It's gaining like a minute every hour or something like that. So over the course of a whole day, it's, it's like 12 minutes ahead or 20 minutes ahead. So there's some, some timing that's happening here is, that's uh, causing the issue. <coughs> um, this lost seconds bit. This was actually something that we needed to figure out. Seconds. Here we go. Uh, no, there we go. That's what we need. Yeah, so the, the detail here was the, the update. Wait a minute. Oh, this is old. Let's refresh the file. Oh, well, that's a problem. Hang on a sec. There we go. Yes, the fish. The fish looks awesome. Here's the. Let's go. Let's try that again. High quality entertainment here. This is the ASCII Aquarium, aka ASCII Aquarium. Uh, let's see what we need. I'm just reconnecting here to the file share. This is the SSHFS connection that was such a problem in the past and will probably remain to be. There we go. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure out the mic here. Exit. There we go. All right, let's try that again. I'm also like, you know, the kids are asleep, so I might have a little bit, of, a little bit of a low voice here on purpose. Make it some kind of boom thing where I can take this mic and put it right next to my face, and then. And then it'll probably sound like this. <laughs> so where were we? Okay, right. So this was my, my time problem. Um, so it's time seconds. Yeah, there we go. This, this mess right here, which is just hilarious. Uh, this was something that was just weird that we couldn't figure out. So let me revert the file because I'm pretty sure I made some updates here. Because when last we left it, this was slipping seconds. And when it woke back up from sleep mode, it would catch up. So, yeah, here we go. That's not it. Minus. No.
There we go. See, this was our problem here. So it's incrementing seconds based on how long the sleep time takes. And that sleep time does not take the correct time. There's a little bit of lag on it. And I'm not sure if that's just the ESP32 or if it's just the way that I'm in initiating the sleep or coming out of it. Because I know I've got a, a 50 millisecond delay at the end here. Yeah, for the scanning delay. So I think that's, I think that's okay. Um, but we can accommodate it by extending our uh, our timing catch up a little bit. <laughs> so if the if the time is too long or over a second, then we increment an additional second, and then we take our seconds already counted and add an additional second to that because we're we're figuring out the last check time down here, and that's what was uh, that's what was getting us the first time because it was slipping seconds. The fish, uh, no, the fish is the fish is not something that I made. The fish is the uh, the ASCII aquarium. Let me see if I can do this. ASCII aquarium. And you can find that on a, a GitHub somewhere. It uses a Python Python graphical type of thing, which is kind of or a Perl graphical kind of thing, which is kind of interesting. But it's uh, just a fun little thing. So we have our, so it's the time minus the last time checked. So I'm not sure what that is. Uh, hang on a sec. go <clears throat> so our we're figuring out our delta time and the only thing we care about really is that the last time the delta was checked is between now and the last time it was checked which we update down here after we figure out that time and if it's greater than 999 millis milliseconds then we assume that yeah, so if it's greater than 999, then seconds already counted has to be at least 1,000, right? And then we increment seconds, but we're also incrementing one second each time. Hmm. Because if this last check comes through, then we're counting the seconds already counted, but that gets incremented with each additional second. This is, this mess is actually, uh, this is just um, like, this is me messing around, like trying to figure out the bug. Hey, come back. There we go. So there's probably a much, much better way of doing this. Um, because if the time is something, well, let's, let's run through this. If the time is something like, mm, let's do that, 1358. So if it's 1358, <clears throat> let's do like this, get a little bit further along. So then our, our delta works out to, it's been this long, our delta is greater than one second. So we say we've already counted one second and we increment one second. <clears throat> it's greater than this, greater than, greater than these two. So we count an additional second and we count, uh, three additional seconds here, but it's not bigger than this. So this is all ignored and we get down to last check time. And we take now minus now minus last check and the seconds already counted. So the delta between now and the last time that was checked, this is actually the delta direct Yeah, so this should actually be delta mills minus seconds already counted. No, why are we subtracting the additional seconds already counted? Because the delta mills contains those seconds. Yeah, I don't like that. 
That looks weird. I'm gonna hold on to that and then Uh, this is um, <clears throat> the language is Arduino, technically, but well, it's, uh, officially it's Arduino, but technically it's C++. And uh, I'm trying to stay out of the C++ as long as I can. This is for um, this is code for Vexus, which is a tool that I've got. Let me see if I can get this on the camera here. It's a little handheld computer that I've been working on for a while, and the idea is that you get to. Uh, have an offline device that can store your notes and timers and things like that. Uh, see, we need to clean the, the guinea pig cage. This is just a, an effort to keep track of things that I keep losing track of. Um, if that's kind of hard to see, I've got a interface for this on the serial uh, terminal. And that's right. There we go. So this is actually a representation, a terminal representation of the display that's on here. And I can type into this screen or I can type into this to change things around. And then on the screen, it updates. So I can, I can interface with this screen, but the terminal doesn't update. But if I interface with the terminal, the screen updates. So you're essentially looking at what's, what's displayed on there. Uh, let's see. There's reminders that I have, and this is keeping track of time essentially so that it can chirp at me. And the chirping is, uh, let's see if we can hear this. Or it's just little, little noises, bleeps and bloops to, uh, oh yeah, it inverts the screen when it does that. So you get this nice, uh, you get a nice flipping of colors and things. So you get the beeping and if your headphones are in, you can look down and you see a flashing light. Uh, the LED flashes as well. So it's just a, a thing to, it's basically a PDA. <clears throat> it's a full QWERTY hardware keyboard PDA. So you can do stuff like uh, open up the notes. Uh, remember, remember, of course I'm typo right now. Remember to thing. And I've typed in remember to thing right here. There we go. And then I can hit enter on that, save that, uh, save that entry. And then I can press up on it and hit S, and it immediately starts a timer for me. So that in five minutes it'll remind me to remember to thing. So the idea is that it's just a, a PDA uh, that I can carry around. It's very lightweight and easy easy to type in reminders of things that uh, I need to hold on to because I just forget this stuff just falls out of my brain all the time uh, and then it pops back up there at random intervals so hopefully when it gets into my brain I get it out and into this and then I can move on from there because I uh, need to re be reminded of all of this stuff <sighs> okay let's get out of this oh yeah so this was this looked weird um, because our delta time is already time that's calculated from now to the last time checked. Or is last time, so last time check is in the past. We're figuring out how much time has elapsed. So technically the now time, the last time it checked, well the last time it checked is now. No, because this is, we want to know when the last time it checked, the last time it did this, uh, this loop. So the last time it was in this loop is now, essentially. Am I wrong? Am I overthinking this? <laughs> because this doesn't make any sense for the, the last time checked. Because I originally had this set up so that it had, uh, it counted a thousand in it. But this doesn't actually keep track of how much time has elapsed. And why would I take, keep track of the time in seconds and then take this extra thousand for seconds already counted? Because the last time checked is a, is a millis. It's a long. <clears throat> uh, the thing I'm fixing right now is it is slipping time. 
Uh, it has a very small battery in it, a 220 milliamp hour battery. It makes the whole thing very light and handy. And actually, you see that magnet on the back of it. You can stick it to like I have a I have a piece of steel that I put on my wristband, and then literally unironically stick this to my watch, and then it just stays there. And then I can hold on to it, grab it, make a quick note, and then put it back. Uh, you can also stick it to like your shirt pocket if you put that piece of steel inside your pocket and just put it against your shirt it'll stay there so this is very light and handy and uh, the problem is that the 220 milliamp hour battery gets about 10 hours of battery life so I've been experimenting with this one which is a uh, thousand milliamp hours and this one is I think it's actually I think it's 1300 this one goes 20 hours with the screen on you know doing doing its own thing um, but it is heavy and the weight is a problem because it makes me less likely to hold on to it and carry it around and it's harder to stick in you know just leave on the wall or stick to a, a, a whiteboard or something so it's like I want the small battery but I don't like the 10 hour battery life so I figured out the ESP32 has, a, has an extended sleep function um, there we go so this has a uh, ESP32 has a deep sleep function which I was messing around with uh, but the deep sleep is essentially a reset so it oh, let's, let's get that back to there we go <laughs> the deep sleep function uh, wipes the SRAM so anything that I have on here I basically hit reboot on this every time I do a deep sleep and then anything that I don't have saved to the EEPROM save to the EEPROM there we go Anything not saved to the EE prom just gets washed out. So it turns out there's a light sleep function. Uh, there we go, the light sleep function. And the light sleep function uh, has a much lower battery usage while also holding onto the SRAM. So it's a lot easier to work with. Uh, however, when I started doing that light sleep function, I had in the previous uh, stream covers this. Uh, the clock would catch up so uh, the delta time it was essentially this up here was expecting to count in like seconds or basically a little bit over a second so <laughs> it would expect to be somewhere between uh, under 999 milliseconds and then a little over 1000 milliseconds so it would count one second it would increment one second and then it would move on from there uh, but what I'm doing now, since I'm putting it to sleep, is this increment is now like uh, several seconds. And this, okay, so there's there's the alarm for something. Let me just can get that through here so you can see it. Where are we? There we go. There we go. Let's go to our timers. Actually, there's a shortcut if you go to the the clock screen and hit T it brings you directly to that time yeah remember the thing that's what that's what my problem is so while it's going off you can hit s to add five minutes to it so you get an instant snooze and then uh, if you hit s multiple times you just keep stacking uh, those five minute increments and then if you hit Q you drop out the entire time so that's a pretty useful interface and like this this was me using a cell phone for this stuff and then the cell phone would not work it would just drop stuff or, or it would lock up and I wouldn't be able to use it and like I, I just need something that's very high reliability so I've been building this over the course of a little over a year I think uh, oh the interrupts so interrupts are interrupts are going to interrupt processes that are already taking place and if something that is already taking place it'll check the interrupt and then it'll stop you know if it's, if it's in the middle of calculating this it, it might check that interrupt and then say hang on let's do the thing real quick and it'll run a function based off whatever the interrupt is pointing to but we don't really care about the interrupts right now because when we enter deep sleep uh, this loop is essentially not taking place at all I'm sorry light sleep yeah so when this light sleep starts it's starting and running for every light sleep second which is two seconds so it runs for two seconds and then it starts that process and when it completes that process you know interrupts interrupts can't help you here <laughs> you have to define whatever this timer wake up is 
uh, and it could be a button essentially, but if it was waiting for a button to wake up from the sleep, then stuff like that timer, it would slip right by. Uh, so it's waking up every two seconds and then evaluating what time it is, determining if any timers are expired and it needs to start chirping. Uh, and then it goes, or it actually does evaluate whether or not the, a button is being pressed in order to wake it from sleep. Uh, but then it starts the sleep cycle again. And then it actually has a scanning delay, which is technically not really necessary. Oh, the kids are, the kids are having fun up there fun slash fighting and right so this is our this is our timer where was i right so the interrupts interrupts aren't going to be able to reach through the uh, the light sleep function because it's 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 not doing i mean as far as i know it's not uh but the point is when it does wake up and it does wake up we're not really getting the right amount of time. So before we were slipping seconds and then it was like the clock was going super fast in a circle to catch up because it could only count one second at a time. So that the difference between this was not nine, you know, it wasn't a thousand, it was like 300,000. So it was like, yes, this is greater than 999. Let's increment. <laughs> Let's say, oh yes, it's still greater than 999 to Delta. Let's increment. And it would just keep updating each time. So technically this last time check has to, this should jump ahead though, that's the problem. So it doesn't really make much sense why it would, uh, why it would be lagging like that. Uh, so the problem was that it was being slow. Uh, and then when you would wake it up, the clock would go brrr, it would spin around like you were, like you were winding a watch or something and it would catch up to the time. Uh, but that's just the, the increment of how many times seconds had passed. Uh, not necessarily the millis because the millis always know like it knows what time it is and it knows what this delta is and technically if I were to tell it to calculate the entire time in in millis and seconds it would catch up but technically we're only sleeping for about two seconds it's between two and four seconds uh, because the time function seems to lag so if that sleep happens then it's already going to like we only have to catch up a few seconds but for whatever reason, now, after writing this fix, it catches the time, but it also goes a little fast. So at the end of the day, the watch is now like two minutes fast or four minutes fast. So there's some additional count of seconds that is, that's messing this up. Uh, but, 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 but. And I think we have this, if, if we, if we clock more than two seconds or more than four seconds or th three seconds, this is, this is overkill obviously, but if we clock more than five seconds, then we're, we're taking the time seconds, uh, minus 60 and then adding that to the time minutes. Yeah, time seconds minus minus. Yeah. Yeah. So if it slips five seconds and it rolls over minutes, then it's okay because it'll, it'll clock over at four seconds in the next minute. Um, so that that'll pick up any slack that gets uh, dropped here but I'm not sure how it would be going fast and that's where that's what led me back to this line of a uh, that's what led me back to this time yeah I appreciate that um, it's uh, it's just kind of the the, the Vexus has no idea what time it is uh, all it has is a calculation of milliseconds that it's processing and how many milliseconds it's been since it started and since it uh, it doesn't know what time or day it is this is the calculation where it's, it's figuring this out you set the time and date once it reboots and then after that it starts counting seconds and then if a second has passed we're incrementing time seconds and this is this is stupid code but it's uh, it works <laughs> it increments it, seconds are greater than 59 then time seconds now equals hey what was that Oh, it's not picking up. That's funny. Okay. Yeah, it's taking time seconds and then subtracting them from 60 uh, and setting it to equal whatever rolls over 60 and then it increments a minute. And then inc minutes past 59, then it increments minutes again. This is technically overkill. That doesn't need to happen. Um, and then it increments hours. And then if hours increment and it's greater than 23, then we tick over the next day, increment the weekday, we set the time hours back to zero, zero hours, 
increment yeah increment a weekday if it's greater than six set it back to zero uh, increment the date and then if it's over the month then we increment the month and all of these things you know, it resets the to-do list that needs to be a separate uh, function I think and then it checks the calendar events uh, to see if any of the calendar events are due to be triggered that particular day so it has no concept of what day it is or what time it is it just knows how many milliseconds it's been since the last time it ran uh, since the last time it restarted and in this case how many milliseconds it's been since the last time it uh, it slept so if it sleeps and it comes back and it says all right I've slept for uh, 5,000 milliseconds exactly then it's going to increment uh, essentially five seconds and then when seconds is plus five if that goes over and now you've got 65 seconds then time seconds equals 60 minus or time seconds minus 60 so you get five seconds rolled into the future and then time minutes would increment one one time so that's how we're kind of catching up with time and incrementing the time in seconds and minutes and, and hours and such uh, but since we're only sleeping two two minutes at a time uh, it's better to just um, what's it called I'm, I'm just catching it as whether or not it's been a second or two seconds or three seconds and then incrementing off that but gaining time is what is weird and the only thing that's technically relevant here is the last time that it checked time which to me only matters if it's now minus the interceding time because the last time the time was checked is actually not yeah see it's the last time the time was checked plus the seconds already counted which is the delta time but technically last time checked is now like flat out because the last time it checked is is now literally this is the last time it processed time so the last time check should actually just be now, as far as I can think. I'm not sure what this is or why it worked mostly, but taking my delta time and then subtracting the seconds already counted, I think was meant to give me... Yeah, so in the case of this... Where is it? Yeah. I had this uh, 3358 number. So in the case of this 3358 number, if the last time checked the delta figures out to be 3358 and if the last time checked is now minus the delta or this is actually the, the complete delta so if this is 3358 then I'm taking the seconds already counted which is um, three seconds and subtracting three seconds so I get 358 milliseconds so it's not an entire second it's like a third of a second and then it would be now minus 358 milliseconds okay that makes sense because I'm already counting, I'm only counting whole seconds, uh, but the delta time doesn't even matter because I've already processed it. So, I mean, why would this now be... I don't think the last time check needs to come up. Because I want it to, I want it to keep track of how long this, this time is, but any time that's a little bit over this is being picked up in seconds, but the the leftovers the 358 is the 358 is getting processed by this anyways oh that's right okay so if it's if it's uh, three seconds plus a third of a second and I increment by three seconds and I go to sleep again then my start time needs to happen um, the, the remaining milliseconds to complete an entire second is now two-thirds of a second so this does make sense See, I, I am smart. I do know what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> However, this this now minus last time check. I'm pretty sure this is the same as uh, the delta. Because I'm taking the last time checked. The previous last time checked. And setting it or the current, the new last time checked <laughs> and setting it equal to now minus the last time check minus last seconds already counted yeah that's right so that's uh, the now time minus one third of a second in our in our example up here so we're getting three five eight subtracted from now and saying that's when that third second ticked over and then in the future uh, if we the next poll time is uh, you know point uh, or is two-thirds of a second in the future 
then when that subtracts out, it's going to figure out that it did tick over an entire second. Okay, this does make sense. I do know what I'm doing. This is amazing. I'm surprised. I'm just as surprised as you. <clears throat> but this does not explain why we would be adding seconds. Because this is the only place that we're adding, that we're figuring this out. Uh, unless our time seconds is... Because time seconds can only be, in this case, it's only tripping if it's uh, 60. And if it trips at 60, then our time seconds equals time seconds minus 60, which would be 0. And then it would roll over, which is fine. But if it's something like 60, seconds already counted. Yeah, see, that, that makes sense, because this is already 1,000. And this can only be greater than 1,000. I don't know, then. I might have to think about this some or hang on. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Game physics and delta time. You're, you're figuring out how many poles have run between the last time it was checked and applying that to real time. And it's like, you know, JavaScript in the browser is supposed to update every second but it's you know it's kind of every second <laughs> and that's usually not a big deal but in this case obviously it is <laughs> yeah exactly it t and then tomorrow you delete all the code because you were tripping it's like <laughs> that's exactly it. that's why you need good version control because you, you walk into your code and you're like what was i doing here why this doesn't make any sense you fool why did you do this and then at the end of the day you're like ah i understand <laughs> undo everything that i just did fantastic now we're, we're re-familiarized with the code. Let's actually, uh, <laughs> let's actually, let's, let's future-proof our work here by adding a comment. <laughs> uh, the delta for additional fractions. Second, and add them to the past time so we can count, count fractions fractions into the future well, that was weird that's funny I don't know how I did that it's like I finished that bit of code and dropped to the end of the line and then added it and then it treats that as one addition to the to the code yeah that's weird I don't understand that this is also Emacs running evil and a few other plugins. So there's like, you know, stuff is added in there and bits work together kind of well. Uh, but sometimes there's, there's, uh, there's confusion. So this is, I mean, this code works. I don't understand why, why we would be gaining seconds. Um, it could be that additional Delta. Oh, well, that's kind of interesting. So there's a uh, there's a scanning delay that takes place here. So when the loop finishes, hmm, hmm, he says, hmm. So when the loop finishes, it introduces this additional scanning delay. Uh, but the scanning delay is stacked with the sleep start. So the sleep start in seconds is tracked here. Uh, like that's that but that's only two seconds and then the sleep start takes place and then the scanning delay takes place which is actually technically overkill uh, this is if it's drawing the screen oh my goodness I don't know what's going on up there I'm curious to know if this is uh curious to know if the uh, if this is working if the stream is coming through actually you could probably help me out space is the stream coming through all right um, I'm not sure how much this is technically a test because YouTube has been crashing and acting up on the last few streams so I hope everything's coming through all right um, yeah the amount of if statements checking the millies is is strange because I was just kind of troubleshooting was trying to figure out a good way to do this uh, but as far as I can tell, and I actually did do this last time on the last stream, was I built this up and I was like, this is dumb. This is introducing a problem. And then I ran through it and went, nope, this is exactly right. <laughs> We're just 
thinking all of our thoughts here at the just in the wrong order uh, because if the seconds is greater than 999 then we're going to go ahead and track the fractions of a second uh, but it, what if it's not greater than 999 well then we're not going to track the fractions because it doesn't even matter we're, we don't care about the fractions until they pass over one second um yeah that's true yeah we don't care if the fractions of a second unless we pass over one second maybe that's a mistake but oh my goodness Hang on a second. There we go. Okay, yeah, it, like, legit. Is this, is this, is this close enough to the mic that this this works all right? Because getting that close is fine. I might be able to figure out a way to do that. I'm just still messing around with the setup. Um, the, this, this is apparently just normal kid stuff going on. So things are normal. <laughs> this is normal. This is fine. This is fine. Uh, yeah, the, the if statement's checking the millis does look strange, uh, but all we're doing is checking how many, if it's been more than one second or two second or three seconds. And this this stacking of time second increments is not technically good, um, but it is equal. So we're not, we're not slipping mill, milliseconds here because we're incrementing by entire seconds. And then we're subtracting those out. And then anything that's left over is gonna be the result of this because now minus the last time checked is actually the delta mills which I should update that and then seconds already counted is is just being incremented up here because if it's greater than 999 then we know that at least 1000 seconds has passed and anything that's a delta to that is going to be added to now in order to count our fraction no subtracted from now right in order to get our fractions of a second because that does make sense this should technically be something where I just take the amount of the entire Delta and then run a, uh, a separate function that just calculates how many seconds and minutes has passed and then catches it up but we're only talking about two seconds here like if I wanted to be able to sleep this for a minute or an hour then that would be that would make a bit more sense but uh, no, not in this case. We're waking every two seconds, so we really shouldn't be slipping any seconds. And I really don't know why we'd be slipping seconds into the future. Um, given how much it's... Hey, 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 hey. No. No. We're not, we're not playing down here. Go upstairs, please. Uh, we should even if we are slipping seconds we shouldn't be slipping seconds in the future so I know we're slipping I know we're slipping milliseconds into the future because this is the, the time is coming up fast so the question is where are we adding milliseconds into the future I guess technically the only place we can add milliseconds into the future is right here um, the other thing is this was not losing minutes at all this was very very accurate timing um, until I made these changes so there is some difference here that takes place uh, and I kind of wanted to attribute it to the the Delta time between the actual light sleep waking and how many seconds have actually passed like it intends to pass two seconds but it actually passes you know 2.59 seconds or something like that but if we're calculating time off the millis then it shouldn't actually make a difference so I'm not quite sure why we why are we here? Why are we still here? It's just to suffer. Every night I feel the Millie timer ticking away. You feel it, don't you? There we go. This is yeah, see, this is just the time calculation. There's no other delays in here, as far as I know. 
No, 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 that actually, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And it doesn't make any sense why it would start doing this now. Because we're counting additional seconds. Right, delta millis. Incrementing by seconds. Maybe just cleaning this up. I mean, these are these are still functions that are this is time that's going to take time to run. Maybe some of these calculations are just, just particularly slow. Um, it's our now minus our delta millis. Well, actually, even if these calculations took a bunch of time, it doesn't make dif a difference because we've already grabbed our millis function. Because this is now is set up here. Like, that doesn't change. Now is the same down here as it is uh, when it gets updated. But it it's only, get, only gets updated at the top of the loop. Hmm. Yeah, this, this makes no sense. But on the plus side, if we can't figure this out, I still have other features that I want to add to it and tweaks that I want to make to it. It's like the delta time is the time. Mills should get you the delta. No, Mills, Mills, Millie, Millies with this with this I in here. I always forget the I. Uh, Millies is getting you the uh, the long return in. It's it's not actually milliseconds. Like I think it is milliseconds uh, of how long the clock has been ticking for. So all we get out of that is basically how long it's been since the last time it restarted. So that's always going to be just in milliseconds. Uh, but we're only pulling this one time per loop. We are, right? Display timer full screen. Hmm. Hmm. No, no, no. Yeah, that's that's only gonna work if it's uh, if it's displaying the timer, which it's not with the screen off. See, and this is pulling the long now when it's calculating the uh, the print for the OLED screen, and that's not really. Why is it doing that? Oh, okay, yeah. That's kind of interesting. So when it's on that screen, it's calculating seconds differently. Oh right. Uh, the like these these stopwatch screens and these timer screens, they all calculate time based on. Here, can you see that? Nope. Nothing. Well, there we go. All of those times calculate time based off the actual millis. Like it calculates its own uh, hours, minutes, and seconds. So the clock screen, it, this is kind of weird and, and actually a, an indication of the code being developed at different times. Um, but these, these times are calculated on these screens. Like it, it'll grab the now, the now time in millis and it'll figure out how many milliseconds into the future it needs to be. And then it saves that as a long, yeah, for the entry. Was that right? Yeah, so it's it's calculating how much time uh, in the future it needs to be, and whether or not that's in the past, and then calculates the minutes and seconds from there. But uh, I'm not technically, I'm not displaying that. I'm storing it as a long, <clears throat> but in the other instance, I'm actually just taking the time and calculating it and incrementing these the clock seconds, and minutes and days and stuff and such. <laughs> so this is a different calculation. So it's not. It's not pulling millis again. So there's no reason for it to slip seconds. So if we think about this, it has to be adding milliseconds in here somewhere. So I guess the question could be, is millis actually in milliseconds or is it like nanoseconds? I mean, the, the function is called millis, so I would assume it's millis. <laughs> Seconds already counted. It's like sec it's like at seconds already counted at least. That's more what that should say. Oh my goodness. This is apparently totally normal. Um so you have to check to see what the delta is yourself. Yeah, right. So we're we're figuring out 
the last time this loop ran is all we really care about. Um, and the last time that loop ran is figured out by last time check. And last time check is defined here. And the last time check is now, which is not actually now. Now, now is when the loop started. Now minus the delta millis, which is this time minus the last time check. So that's the interceding milliseconds. And then we're from that we're subtracting the interceding milliseconds plus the seconds already counted. Total, this is like maximum seconds already counted, rounded seconds already counted. Is that right? Hmm. And our seconds already counted increments by 1,000 each time. It's it's here. It's right here. It has to be. Yeah, uh, whenever you run... Uh, so do you just have a gigantic loop running? Yes, uh, whenever you run any of these uh, microcontrollers... See, it's already done charging. That's the other cool thing about this small, the small battery is it charges so quick. Because uh, this, this Helltech... Uh, board doesn't actually charge that fast so when you get this gigantic battery like this one it it takes a long time to get a full charge um uh, yeah whenever you run these arduino or any of these microcontrollers you're you're essentially performing a, a setup function and then a loop function and then it it does the setup one time when it starts and then it does the loop uh, perpetually essentially so it's doing that loop and evaluating what state it's in and deciding what it needs to display on the screen, how it needs to react to button presses, and pretty much everything. Um, so that's where, this is where all the, all the everything happens. Uh, and that's why at the end of it we still have this scanning delay, which, so the scanning delay was originally, hmm, tell you what, I can't find it. I can't find out what the problem is. If the display screen is off, then it's going to, or this display screen is, can you see that? There we go. If the display screen is not off, then we're going to draw the current screen. But if the display, if it's on, if the screen is on, we're gonna go ahead and put the delay in there. Okay? This is, this is us trying to fix the timing problem because this shouldn't actually be a problem, but uh, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that this is, this is my best guess because I can't see what the timing is. I can't see what the timing issue is. I can't see why it would why it would be adding additional seconds to this. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that, and uh, we'll apply it, and we'll see. Maybe that fixes the issue, um, but I'm not gonna know until like the end of the day because it's actually like I said, it's it's slipping seconds. And hey, you know, I did I did do a last time I worked on this. I had some some test output uh, through the serial interface. Yeah, so I had this. Hmm. Okay, hang, hang on, hang on. I'm not, I'm not gonna break stuff. I promise. Um, I had some serial output. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Yeah, see. So I had serial output here. So I wanna know what the difference is. No, I don't think that helps me. So uh, this was how I was troubleshooting last time is I had the serial print out while it was sleeping. And then while it was sleeping, it was figuring out what the delta was and printing that out to the serial interface. And then it was easy to see, you know, how many seconds it was actually sleeping, which is how I figured out that it was, was considerably longer than the actual amount of seconds it was supposed to sleep. Uh, you know, there's other routines that it does after it wakes up. And I'm essentially sleeping every two seconds <laughs> many, many, many times a day. Um, so there's there's some, some time slip taking place in there. Uh, and it has to do, it has to do with the sleeping function. It, it absolutely has to. Uh, okay, yeah, I am going to try this. Uh, this is a, a catch at the end where after it evaluates, oh, that's just doing the serial, handling the serial output. Um, after it evaluates, it says if the screen is off, then, or the screen is not off, then I'm going to draw the current screen. And uh, if the screen is 
not off, then I want to do the delay. Because if the screen's on, then I have like some input being tested. Although this might, this might make the serial delay be weird. Uh, scanning delay. Oh, this is serial display delay. So technically, if the screen's on, then the serial input's going to be a little weird. Yeah, that's okay. I think that's all right. So the serial display, the serial display delay. That seems kind of weird. What is that? Last serial input time does not equal zero, and last serial input time is greater than last serial display time which is now minus serial display time or, or now minus serial display time greater than serial display delay. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. So yeah, that'll update. So it's essentially going to update every second. The screen will update every second if there's no update on the screen, like no serial update. But if I press keys in the serial interface, the screen will update immediately. So it's like the, the maximum delay that it'll do uh, before updating. But if I type, it'll immediately update. So that's what that is. Um, let's see. Yeah, I wanted to put this in here. So if this display is not off, it'll do the scanning delay. But if the display is off, um, which is down here, it's going to draw the countdown time, which means it'll calculate whether or not the, the light needs to blink if a timer is expired. Ooh, what's it doing in here? Because it is pulling that. Ho ho! Look at that! No, wait a minute. Yeah, this is within its own. Um, yeah, this might have. Uh, this is isolated. Because that's establishing how many milliseconds it's been, but it's only using that to calculate the countdown time. Uh, technically, this is kind of overkill for the screen off because it does a, uh, a chirp if the time is up. Mm. There we go. Yeah, it's always going to chirp if the time is up. And then blink the LED. And alert time equals now. Yeah, this, this, is, a, this is a void function, right? Yeah, it doesn't return anything. So... Okay, well, that was worth a shot. <laughs> so when it does sleep, although it doesn't tell me how long the countdown timer takes, how long this takes. So there might be a little delay there. It can't be as long as this. Uh, this we're gonna call this uh, a change. Okay, so that's that's updated. That's different. Uh, yeah, the complexities of the system might have taken some toll. It's this is something that I've been iterating for a long time. Uh, but it, I assure you, <laughs> the timing worked just fine uh, until I started adding this up here. And once I started adding this, uh, I started adding seconds to things, and I'm not quite sure why. So time seconds equals time seconds minus 60. Greater than that. Yeah, it has to be that. Hmm. I don't know, gaining seconds is uh, a small price to pay for having those uh, those very long battery lives. So the battery life almost doubled once I started doing this, the light sleep function. Um, and I don't miss any alarms still, so it's it works well. So, where was I? Let's go over here. Let's look at our, our features here. Oh yeah, remember to do the thing. Um, let's see. I've actually got that here. This, uh, this does have a. It has a search function on the notes as well. So, like, I don't think the serial output for that is is good though. So here we go. There. Here's our notes. Uh, so doing things over there with stuff. Uh, and then we're going to do a search for 
affects us, and I actually can't type into this. I have to type here. This is the search function. Yeah, it has a search function. No big deal. And that skips us down to that. There. I actually installed that. I did that. Um, yeah. So sleep wakes to clock. What does that even mean? <laughs> oh, right. Okay. Um, let's see. Sleep wakes to clock. So when the sleep function wakes, so we need to look at the process input section. So when it processes the input, we're going to see if it's the display off screen. There we go. So if the current screen is the, wait, section five. No, 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 that's reading the input. There we go. So if the, yeah, there we go. The input on display off screen. So if it receives any input on the display off screen, it's doing this. And it is resetting the selection and changing to the menu screen. So let's, we don't want that to be the menu screen. We want that to be the clock screen. And the clock screen is definitely uh, time display screen. There we go. Yeah, we did that. Let's go back to where we were. I don't even remember where we were. There we go. We'll change that to time display screen. And then it turns on the display and then sets the free CPU frequency back. Um, maybe it's doing something when it sleeps. So this is the input over here. So if we're on the menu screen and we select the, uh, the sleep function, hmm. then it sets the current screen to the display off screen, turns off the display, sets the CPU frequency to 10. Hmm. Setting the CPU frequency to 10 megahertz might be, might have some issue. No, this one is not on GitHub, and I've, I've gone back and forth on whether or not I would post it. Uh, no one actually has any vex, vexes, vexes, vexi right now. Uh, so if someone else did, I would be more likely to share it, or at least invite them to the, the private GitHub. But uh, this is also like. I've got it to a point where it works really well, to the point that I would actually be able to sell some of these circuit boards, um, and like give it to people and be like, "This is not, this is not trash. <laughs> this will work." <laughs> uh, but I'm not. This this would be like test code, anyways. I would I would probably publish binaries directly. Although anyone who would want a Vexus is probably going to be a programmer, anyways. <laughs> so maybe maybe you got a good you've got a good point. Uh, yeah, this is not on GitHub. There's a few other things that I put on GitHub. Uh, I have, I have misgivings about GitHub, but uh, that just that is what it is. Um, maybe a CPU frequency is is an issue, because I mean technically it shouldn't be dropping any milliseconds in here. But this is the thing that's new is the sleep function, and now that I'm sleeping. Like there's there's something in the sleep function somewhere. There's some process that's being applied that's that's slipping stuff. And I'm gonna go ahead and remove this, and we'll just uh, we'll just let it run. It, it might suffer some reduced battery life, but I'm more interested in whether or not I uh, whether or not this makes a significant change. Removed. CPU frequency reduction for sleepy time. Sleepy Tim. Um, let's see, I did that and moved scanning delay. Open. I don't. I really don't think that's the problem, but I'm. I'm just gonna test it out during screen. Is it display? There it is. Display off screen. Yeah, Vim Vim handles that a lot better. That autocomplete. You know, Emacs is a really good uh, operating system, lacking only a good text editor. 
<laughs> Alright, so that's our, uh, it's taking forever to save, come on. There we go. Well, I, I don't really, I don't really care about keeping it private. Someone wants to mess around with it, that's fine. Uh, it's really more about the support, uh, because once, once people have, people have code, then it just kind of opens up to, uh, opens up to pretty much anyone walking in and saying, hey, what's the deal with this? You need to change this. And maintaining any of that stuff is just very, very annoying. Um, let's see. Sleep wakes to clock. Okay, so I did do that. Clock screen shortcut to sleep. Oh, right. Okay, yeah. So uh, that's the process input section. And that is... Where are you? There we are. So when it processes input, if we are on the display time screen, let's skip back here. Last serial display time. What? No, that's not what I want. I want the clock screen. What's the clock screen called? Uh, large timer screen. Oh, I'm on it right now. Time display screen. <laughs> Okay, so that's time display screen. We'll skip back to process input. And if current selection is zero? Oh, that's if you press H, which is back. So technically we want to be on L. There we are. Input on menu screen. Uh, if it's display off screen, then it does that. If the current screen is the time display screen, there we go. Then J will cycle the brightness down. K cycles brightness up. L will right reset to the menu screen with selection zero. O does a quick note entry. Okay, yeah, I think this is where I want to be. T jumps to the first expired timer. And then that's it for shortcuts, no? Yeah, that's it. Okay, cool. So let's do another one of those and instead our sleep function will be let's see so we're back here I guess top right button maybe that's a good good easy one to feel top right button is P it will be P on the top screen and then once um, to sleep Sleep, capital P. That's why. See, it's, it's all about those mnemonics. That's how you. That's how you learn your keyboard and learn your programming. Um, <clears throat> timer entry. Uh, do, uh, uh, wait, I don't care about any of this. What is this doing? That's too big. There we go. Screen equals current screen. Uh, this is just a shortcut to the sleep function. So all I care about is, all right, so let's mark this and then we'll go back to the sleep activation, which takes place here. No, I wonder if it's a menu screen. There we go, Goes to the, jumps to the menu screen. We want input, that's the to-do screen, input on stopwatch screen. Where is, where is my entire life even? Um, okay, there's the process input. Okay, here it is, yeah. Process input for the menu screen. And if it sleeps, wait, what? Oh, this is the H, which is back. Uh, so we want to go to J, K, oh, we have <laughs> braces for skipping around. This is, these are all Vim commands, by the way. I'm sure you, you might have caught on. Uh, L, so L is any selection. And if it's the sleep function, then this is all we do, which actually, see, look at this, look at all this mess. Let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit. So what is, let's mark this sleep. M, or mark this sleep. Yeah, that's where the CPU frequency is, is adjusted. I don't think we really care about that right there. Um, let's make ourselves a new function. 
don't think we have any returns for it. Yeah. There we go. We'll drop that there. Oops. And there we go. We'll respect this by keeping it in its own area. Serial dump. What is that? Let's process input. Check events. Yeah, we'll put that right here. So, enter sleep. Enter light sleep. So now we can update this here. And we activate this. Where was my mark? What did I say? Mark S for sleep. There it is. Enter light sleep. It's a void, right? Yep. Make sure I'm getting my syntax right. Uh, ooh, I might have forgotten my semicolon. Nope, there it is. Okay. So enter light sleep. So that's that's correct. And then we want our shortcut to be that, which was over here. Uh, shortcut to sleep. There it is. So that's yeah. This isn't super functional, but we're also like doing a microcontroller. So like, like be be chill, man. <laughs> we turn off the spleen. Turning off the spleen. We're turning off the spleen. Um, last minute updated. Time minutes. What is this? See, this is me messing around with the the deep sleep timer. <clears throat> sleep start enter light sleep this isn't even entering the light sleep though because like no yeah this isn't even like entering the light sleep the light sleep cycle starts down here But it's only doing that if the display is off. Yeah, if the display is, if it's on the display off screen, then it's still calculating if the serial is available, which is fine. Uh, dude, it's still checking, it's still pulsing the rows. No, it's, it. that's right, okay, it still has to do that. And then it's just checking time. Yeah, there's no, ugh. This all fits. I don't understand why it would be gaining seconds. Oh well, whatever. Alright. Sleep, fast, clock, wake. I already fixed that. Whoops. Where are we? Skip down. There we go. Sleep wake fast clock. We got that. LED pump when sleep. That's a good idea. Sleep two check in check ins. Sleep two <laughs> seconds wake check button. Seventy five percent twenty four hours. Oh, I know that. Uh, Forty two hours on full charge. That's good. Last button screen timeout last button screen timeout oh yeah i get that auto night sleep that's a good idea wake before alarm that's also a good idea uh so i did that um actually wait test sleep wakes the clock yeah you never don't don't delete your uh don't delete your notes <laughs> Um, I should put this ahead. Test, clock, screen, short, cut, sleep. There we go. Test, sleep, wakes, to clock. So I'm not testing it right now, so this will make a note for me to test it later when I'm actually, when I've actually loaded the code, updated it. Uh, auto night sleep's a good idea. 
I don't even know if I want the LED to be on while it's sleeping, but it does look pretty dead when it's when it's not. Wake before alarm. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. So it should it should check the alarms. It determines whether or not uh, an alarm is going off, and if an alarm is going off, it should technically wake up for that alarm. I think that's okay. Uh, wake if an alarm. Auto night sleep. Oh, that's where we set up like a schedule, and then if it's, you know, past midnight, then it goes, it puts itself to sleep. So if you forget to, it'll go to sleep. Last button screen timeout. That might be the same kind of thing anyways. The last time a button is pressed, it should record the time. And if a button has not been pressed in... 20 minutes or an hour or something it can go to, it can put itself to sleep uh midnight ee prom right i don't know how i feel about that anymore and then one time pad vexus which is a full feature um so let's let's cancel out of this i think that's all i want to do right now I do want to see how this uh, how the stream came through. It, it appears to still be working. Uh, certainly, folks watching. So, <laughs> yeah, we've got that file blob. I remember that. Yeah, this uh, might be able to go over some of the features here. It has a full. It has a full QWERTY keyboard. Uh, and you get to use basically Vim commands to, to edit things. So if I hit O, it gives me a new line underneath this where I can put in a new note. New note. I can hit V to make it large size. Um, and then you can turn any of those into, uh, into timers directly by hitting S. And that gives you uh, a timer countdown with that note name on it. Uh, with, from the timer screen, you can also select... Uh, you have count down timers and you have clock timers. So the count down timer, I can set this to like 30 minutes. Let me see that a little bit better. And when I hit next, it counts down 30 minutes. Come on, there we go. But if I do something like uh, set the time based on the hours, so it's, uh, it's 8.46 right now. So if I set it for 0.946 and hit C, it'll do that next clock time. So the next time the clock reads 9.42 or 9.46, it'll pop up with this timer. And we can see from here, I see the time's off. <laughs> so we can see the time comes up that way. So it probably thinks it's like nine o'clock right now. So we'll quit that or we can hit S and add time directly from here. Yeah, see, it thinks it's 9 o'clock. So 15 minutes, like 15 minutes for over the course of 24 hours is not great, but, uh, or it's not bad. Uh, it's not good, but <laughs> I've certainly had worse. It's still usable. Um, the other thing this does, it has, oh my goodness, I don't know what's going on up there. Uh, let's see. It has to-do items, which you check off, like daily, daily list of things to do. And it gives you a, a tracker of how many of those things are done blinking at the bottom it's a little progress bar and then when you complete all of them it, it gives you the uh, the awesome smiley which is of course entirely necessary there we are look at how awesome he is you can't quite see it they show it to you in the code but <laughs> it's not that important uh, the other thing is good heavens what is happening up there hey Keep it down. What are you doing? Okay. Thanks. <laughs> uh, the other thing is this this stores reference information too. So like if you want to put passwords or phone numbers or anything, um, like there's always little bits of things that I need to remember that I I slip that slipped my mind. I've I've literally created hardware and programmed this entire thing to supplement my brain um, because I'm so bad at it. 
uh, but this is this is what's making me good at it. Um, so this stores reference information that you can uh, keep in here and then search. So you can tag all of the items. You have a, a character limit for how long the line can be, uh, how many characters. But you can also just split it out into next lines. So then from from that field, you have the opportunity of getting into your reference data and then doing a search for, you know, uh, um, let's see. Recipe. Then I can scroll through the, the list of of items that are in the the recipe results you see we've got the ultimate burrito here hit enter on that and it skips me right down to that entry in the reference uh, material so this is the, this is the secret recipe for for the ultimate burrito uh, and you have all this all this reference just at your fingertips you know wherever you are things like door access codes and things that are somewhat forgettable uh, you can just drop them in here um, and like I said, you, technically you can do passwords. I don't think it does. I don't think we have enough extended characters in there. But the reference data is hard coded, so it goes to the uh, it goes to the uh, flash, not the SRAM. So you get like, I mean, the ESP32 has like eight megabytes in it, and I've I've barely scratched the surface on this. I think we've got. Um, let's see. Auto detected flash size eight megabytes. Writing. I don't think it gives me the total percentage. Oh, there it is, 27%. So I've got, I've got the 3.3.5 megabytes is being used. So there's, there's tons of space. Uh, it, obviously, eight megabytes is a lot for when you're dealing with just like ASCII chars. <laughs> so that works out really well, and you know you can you can put a lot of stuff in there and just carry it around with you and always have access to it, and set reminders for yourself when you get distracted and. You know, that, that's why I do it mostly is because I get distracted all the time and I get lost in projects and then time slips away and then I'm late for something or something. So having this where I can pop it open or if it starts chirping at me and then I can immediately jump to the timer that's expired and hit S to snooze it for five minutes uh, helps me keep track of everything because I'm bad at it. <laughs> um, it needs needs the 3d printed buttons on top of it uh, I had one model that had buttons I could probably just drop it on here and see what it does uh, but I want to I want to redo the whole faceplate with the buttons um, this one also has a, a lot lower profile because it's not meant to be removable so this is this is mounted a lot lower than this one uh, so if I can combine this small battery of this one with the the low profile mount of this one and then just remove this whole battery on the back end. Uh, I think that'd be in pretty good shape. Very useful, very covered, uh, very light. Um, I mean, the thing's so light. I, like I said, I, I put a piece of steel on my wristband, and then the magnet, hard drive magnet, will just stick it right there, and it'll stay there. Uh, also, put a piece of steel on my on my hat, on my cap, and then I can stick it to the cap, the brim of my cap, and it's light enough. It doesn't even matter. I can barely feel it. Okay, let's see. I have those features. I still want to see if this stream came out okay. I, I, streaming on YouTube is just weird, man. So hopefully this worked out. Uh, I'm going to review it, and then hopefully I'll be back with some more features if things worked out well. And maybe it'll be a little bit quieter later. <laughs> all right. I'll catch you all later. Uh, drop questions in the, the thing for the, the YouTubes, and uh, let me know or something. All right, bye.